Welcome everyone. Let's start this. The I would say that is the third hub dev call. So uh, yeah, happy to be here. Welcome everyone. I will start sharing my screen. And I already put a reminder there, and because I don't want to forget, if you so you sh everybody should have access to the to the agenda. And everybody should have editing access, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's everybody here. Yeah, everybody with a link has editor access. So if everybody, so at the moment, you can just add discussion topics to the agenda, but also in general, uh, before the meeting, right? if you think of something during the two weeks that we don't meet, uh, just add stuff and we can discuss them here. That's the, that's the point we are meeting, right? So to be able to discuss different things concerning the hub uh, development. Okay, uh, that being said, uh, let's start with the first part, uh, the uh, an overview of what uh, the informal team worked in the last two weeks, right? So, <clears throat> sorry for that. Um, so yeah, again, you can see all of this in the project board, right? So if you go to our project board, you see a bunch of tabs there, stuff like sprints, how do we work, and also the current OKRs that we are working on. But uh, again, this may be a little bit uh, annoying for some people that are not working with it. So what did we do in the last two weeks? Uh, Gaia V10 was released. And uh, actually, that was an amazing success. It, I think the upgrade was in under five minutes. So huge shout out for everybody that contributed from Milan that helped uh, and uh, ICF that helped a lot with uh, communication, and especially to the validators, right? The validator community that managed to do an upgrade under five minutes. So great job, everyone. Um, we also released uh, Interchain V2, Interchain Security V2. There are two main features in it. One is soft opt-out. This were both of and the other one standalone to consumer changeover, right? So the soft opt-out was needed for the neutron launch. And so standalone to consumer changeover is what enables Stride to transition from being a standalone chain, an existing chain, to be a consumer chain. Um, both of these features were part partially of the emergency release that we had uh, somewhere in May, I think. However, now we had an official, we basically V2 collects all the contributions that we had on uh, on interchange security since V1. So it's nicely packed. And we also integrated in Gaia main. It's not a release yet. So this will be, will end up in V11. So we already talked to, to the Haifa team to start. Uh, so of course, we did testing, internal testing end to end and all these things, but it will be good also to test this on the test net. So we already start on local test nets, already started those efforts. Uh, another point is we released uh, Interchain Security V3, the uh, release candidate. And that is uh, basically Interchain Security with SDK 047. So first of all, thanks to the Notional team for the help with this. Um, we already found an issue during testing. So thanks to Hi5. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think they, they were the one in identifying it in a local testnet. Uh, there is a the problem is to, without going in details, it's a problem with the infraction type. Uh, the state is not changed. So basically the SDK changed the type of the of this field in the profile. The how this is stored in state is exactly the same. However, how it's parsed, like marshaled and sent over IBC is changed. So basically this change breaks the wire. That's the reason uh, connecting the chain with V3 on it, which Strider will run this, and Gaia, which has at the moment V1.1, will break, right? So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get an error. And that's the reason we are in the process of cutting the release candidate, uh, second release candidate, or a third, because there was one in, the, in, in between. Um, and yeah, this will be, as I said, the use for the Stride testnet, which I think we'll talk a little bit later about it. We have here a point. It's supposed to happen today. I don't think it happened already, but yeah, we'll talk a bit uh, uh, about it in a bit. Another uh, important thing, the liquidity removal. So the proposal passed, which is nice, or did it actually officially? I think it officially passed or is very close to, uh, to 
It's passed. I sure hope it it's, does. Oh, it's passed. It's, Excellent. It passed. Perfect. Okay. So uh, we already integrate as a result to integrate the uh, release candidate uh, from the from the gravity dex, right? So thanks for Dong Sun for putting this together. And uh, it's already in Gaia main. We'll start again testing it on the local testnet, and to, it will be again part of Gaia v11. And uh, I'm skipping all the work that we in progress, right? So we continue working on different features like uh, cryptographic equivocation is one. Um, we'll see if it gets in v11 or if we have to push it to in the next release. Then uh, the other thing is we are refactoring how throt the throttling mechanism works. We are moving a lot of the logic from the provider to the consumers to make uh, to eliminate some potential uh, denial of service attacks. It's nothing big, nothing to be concerned, just that we want to make sure that uh, that everything is fine. One and second to to clean the protocol, right? To, I to have a quick sure. question. Yeah, is is this kind of like the situation where it's almost fair to say that Neutron is like DDoSing itself every time the unbonding window is hit? Is, that's is this different. that? No, it's not. It's different. So that's, okay. It's different in the idea that even with this refactoring, that will still be a thing. The problem with that is, so we discussed last time, right? So there are multiple solutions. If, uh, easy fix is what you're saying, Jacob, or we are hoping that that will fix it. We didn't, I don't think we tested it yet, or I don't know if Neutron tested it yet. Something that will be interesting to discuss to get deeper into it. The other thing is it's already fixed in, in SDK main, which most likely will end up in SDK 50. I do not think the fix is in 47. So the way the downtime slashing works at the moment, or the downtime window you put, there is this state that for every, it's a bitmap, right? And for every entry in the bitmap, you actually put another key in the store. So now I think Neutron has the window, it's 140,000 blocks, the downtime window. That means that the bitmap is 140,000 ent 140, entries in the state that they need to be reset every time a validator is suspected to be down. Now, this combined also with the soft opt-out that allows 5% of the validating power to be out, this contributes exactly, leads to this, uh, this problem that Neutron has. So it's a serious problem that we have to figure out a way to go around it that clearly will be fixed once, uh, once we have uh, SDK. So basically Neutron will have to run SDK 50 or something. Okay, I mean that that's fine. I'll, I'll throw a couple of comments. Once Neutron is updated to forty seven, it'll automatically have that fix that I made the PR for. Where like, um, it, it, it's funny. I actually I, I thought that um, everybody kind of knew about IAVL Fastnode, but what it is, it's just a big performance improvement to IAVL. Uh, it adds uh, additional, like, mm, oh boy, this is hard to explain. It it breaks it into groups so it can iterate more quickly, basically. Um, and that may not be the most eloquent way to explain it, but it improves the iterator performance dramatically. 47 will do that too, and by default. Um, so. If they apply this patch to 45, fine. If they upgrade to 47, also probably fine. And if 50, um, you know, further resolves this even better. So that's a very good point, right? So we'll need to coordinate to Neutron to, I don't know if somebody from Neutron is on the call. If it, somebody is, please say something. Uh, we need to coordinate to Neutron to understand exactly what are their plans regarding SDK versions, right? So uh, theoretically, once we cut the final release of V3, which will happen probably this week or next week, once uh, the testnet with uh, Stride is going through, um, once we cut that, Neutron can start upgrading for the seven. There is nothing stopping them from doing that besides their, I don't know, so from an interchain security point of view. 
Uh, they they have a PR open now. Um, okay. And uh, I mean, in general, I'm just kind of encouraging the 47 upgrade. Um, by the way, do we plan to do that for V11 on the hub, or is that going to be V12? That will be, so it will not be V11. V11, we want to push fast because, first of all, it's the liquidity removal. Uh, the the proposal passed, so we have to get that uh, soon. The other part, important part of uh, V11 is uh, the LSM module, which I just got. Uh, I got a notification from uh, from Stride that uh, that I think they have a release. They have a PR ready to put on uh, on the SDK. So nice. that all this goes in V11, and we don't want to delay it longer. With the 47, the 47 that delayed there is not necessarily technical, or it is partially technical. We need to to gather more confidence in uh, in this version of SDK. The thing, the problem that it's not really a problem, but it's basically there are not that many chains on 47 yet. So maybe it's the the information is all this basically a few weeks old, but at that time, like a few weeks ago, there were two chains running 47. Uh, Stride, and, Stride and Injective, right? No, Stride, did, because Stride is not running 47 in production. Stride will run 47 once they become a consumer chain. At the moment, I think Stride is on 46, right? I think 47. No, 47. You are on okay, 47, okay, so, so that may be then that we have three chains because I think it was also Polymer, one of the chains, but I'm not sure. Uh, again, there it's a handful. Of, there are a handful of chains, and this is the thing we need to get a little bit more confidence that uh, there are no no issues with 47. There were in the past some issues that were that appeared with 46 and 47 um, that were fixed. There were nothing major that uh, nothing that was attacked but yeah we want to make sure so this is basically the hold up uh our plan so this is kind of going into the planning of q3 we started already uh people can go it's not complete but if people go to our uh, okrs for uh, the third quarter this is basically 323 uh you can see basically what we are planning and one of the epics here it's actually the to upgrade 47 and ICS 27. All right, so we have here an entire plan how to go about it. And basically we want to figure out a way to, to look a bit through the change log to see is there something that requires special attention? That's one. Uh, to align with, uh, to, with the SDK team, uh, see if they have concerns about any of those parts, that if we should look in something more carefully. And it would be also very nice to have a little bit uh, like more chains going through a phase of running the uh, running SDK 047 and see that things are going well. Uh, this is mainly, the reason for this is that the hub was not upgraded. It stays on the same version for, I would say two years, if it's not more. I think Milan will know better the answer to this, but well, the hub is on 45 for a while. So the jump, yeah, 45 has been around for a real long time. Exactly. So this is not ideal, clearly. So we are not happy with that, but we'll fix that. But the thing is the difference between 45 and 47, it's quite big. There are a lot of changes. So we want to cover the bases and to not just go modify half, because Gaia mainly, besides interchange security, it's uh, basically is basically SDK. All right, so we want to make sure that we don't change half of the code on Gaia without uh, carefully considering all the all the risk. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is the other thing that we were doing during this uh, last two weeks. We are almost done with it, planning for Q3. Uh, this planning contains mostly things that uh, like cover things that Jehan already talked about in the in the planning uh, in the roadmap, right? So the things that we want want to work on uh, that uh, that roadmap that it's a live document, right? So things will all get updated there. Some important things are the we continue to work on cryptographic verification. The forty-seven that we discussed, Gaia V eleven. We also talked about that. 
And uh, another important uh, refactoring of this throttling mechanism. And we will start doing looking seriously into opt-in security. There is uh, already, this is actually something interesting and maybe we can talk more about that at the end if we have time. There is a proposal, a signaling proposal. Not, it's not actually, it's a hub forum. I have a hub forum uh, post on uh, fraud, uh, fraud votes that uh, Jehan put there and it will be interesting to get uh, more feedback from the community what they think about that. That will be a temporary solution to the lack of fraud proofs that will enable us to build opt-in, a version of opt-in, which, yeah, would, it's, it's something that we can use now and to take, have an advantage of our competitors such as Eigenlayer and Ethereum, of course. Yeah, this is pretty much uh, the overview in, uh, in a few minutes. Um, any questions? No, actually, that was a really good overview. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay, then with it, I will pass it to you for uh, updates on uh, IFA. Yeah, I can give a few quick updates dates. Uh, so uh, last week, we've been preparing for the second stride rehearsal. Um, and unfortunately, it was actually scheduled for today. But unfortunately, we're going to have to push it back. Um, Dante, I think Marius already mentioned this, but Dante caught a small bug in ICS v3. Um, we just, we, I think we talked about this uh, uh, JSON marshalling issue. Um, and uh, currently, we're waiting for uh, the interchain security team to uh, cut another RC, which is going to be incorporated in the next stride uh, release. And that's what we're going to launch with. Um, and this is going to happen on July 5th. Uh, so that's next our next test, testnet Wednesday slot. Um, the uh, the consequence of the 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 bug was basically that the uh, that stride would have got gotten prematurely offboarded um, if there was a slashing packet received on the provider chain, and so that would have been obviously really bad. And we didn't want to make the testnet participants have to go through another relaunch, um, so we thought it was best to just push push it back by a week. That's very interesting. Uh, Why would the chain have been offboarded? That that's um. I guess I never expected to hear that. Um, I don't know the details of like how the, the the slash packet is handled on the provider side. Maybe Marius can speak to yeah. that. So uh, it's something that actually I think we have an open issue. We didn't really thought that that's going to happen. Uh, we have an issue to remove that. So what's happening now, if you send the packet and you receive an error acknowledgement, the way we handle that error acknowledgement maybe is not the best. What we do, we close the channel. Because mm. in general, you shouldn't receive an error acknowledgement, right? Because there is, unless something bad happens, like is this case, right? It's something bad happening. Um, but probably most likely we should remove that to actually handle the acknowledgement and leave that to put an error, notify like operators will see the error message, hopefully, and uh, we can fix it without removing a consumer chain, which will be disruptive, very disruptive. So this is something maybe we should, uh, this is a good point to, as a to do, to increase the priority of that issue. Okay. Um, yeah, other than that, tomorrow we're also doing a relaunch of Pion 1. Um, this is uh, Neutron's persistent testnet. Uh, unfortunately, it has been down for the last week uh, because of various factors. One of them was uh, in a previous upgrade, the state had been corrupted uh, due to a bad migration. Um, and uh, also, there was some real error downtime. Uh, we've now kind of sorted all of this out, and there's going to be a a relaunch tomorrow, um, and that's going to be the new persistent testnet for, for Neutron. Um, and then we're also planning uh, with the Duality team to do another rehearsal with them, and that's also scheduled for July 5th. 
Um, this means that on July 5th, we'll have two rehearsals happening. One is the stride rehearsal and the second is the, the, the dual duality one. Um, other than that, um, Luxa has been uh, holding some feedback sessions through what we're calling the testnet validator working group, which is basically the most active validators on the testnet. Um, we have we have these calls with them and trying to basically figure out ways to increase participation, improve the experience for these validators, um, and um, just make sure that the testing is going uh, as best as improve the quality of the testing as much as we can with their participation. Okay. Um, currently, the main point of feedback that we've received is just the enormous cost of participation um, in these test nets. Basically, the, the time and the obviously the infra costs for running basically an entire parallel set of infra for the testnet, especially when we have this persistent testnet. Um, and so I think this is an ongoing conversation, but we're going to try to find ways to make sure it's less of a time burden, less of a cost burden for these validators. Um, other than that, we're also starting work on Gaia v11 uh, testing. And uh, that's going to continue. Any thoughts or questions? Awesome. Thanks, Adet. Uh, question. Do you expect difficulties with the two rehearsal test nets on July 5th? No, I we don't. Actually, them at the same time. we've done um, the duality. We've already done a duality um, a launch before. So this is the second one. Um, and at this point, we're pretty confident that, like most validators, understand how to launch consumer chain. Um, the stride testnet obviously is a little bit more complex, uh, but again, all the validators have done it once before. We did this three weeks ago. Um, we've done local test test nets on our side. I know the strides team has been doing a ton of testing on their side as well. Um, so I think like the most uh, important point here is just comms and clarifying the process because it's not trivial from an operations point of view. Um, but uh, Lexa has been on that. I know ICF team has also been helping out in comms and um, the stride team has been very supportive there as well. So uh, I think we're we're good. Uh, that sounds great. Uh, the other question I had is duality. Do you know on what uh, version of ICS that will run uh, the launch? Uh, I think we know this. Let me. If it's yeah. on top of your head, if not, we can. It's not on top it. of my head, but I can. It's uh, it's okay, Dan. It's not. I can find out. Um. Yeah. Any other questions regarding uh, the work that Haifa is doing? No. Cool. Um, I think we can skip this. Uh, I thought that would be so I added this here in the idea that we have uh, that the rehearsal is today. Since it will not be, uh, and we already covered it, right? It will be in July 5th. Uh, release candidate, uh, we, we try to cut it today or tomorrow. And uh, anything else? So I've seen some people from the Stride team are here. Right? Ah, Aiden is here. Uh, anything else that you guys need from the from our team for this rehearsal? MRS. Um no, I don't think so. I think we we just need the release candidate um, with the bug patch. Beyond that, uh, like it is said, we've done a ton of local testing. Everything seems like it works. I think the HIPAA test set is also valuable because we get um, practice with validator comps. But um, from our perspective, we don't need anything besides the next release candidate. That's great to hear. Um, so this will then be with RC2. Um, and by the way, congrats to for getting both proposals passed. Uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Cool. Then uh, 
Milan, I will pass it to you to talk more about uh, the forum updates. Sure, I, I just wanted to kind of put them there uh, to see if there's uh, any interest in, in discussion. I think duality as um, we have the prop on chain now, so that's that's a done done thing. Uh, enhancing ICS uh, mechanism design, that's uh, regarding um, fees and funding, community pool and um, validator commissions. Um, I did take a look at that, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but not in too much detail. Um, does anybody want to go into that a little, or have any comments on on that particular proposal? You want to click click through, Marius? Um, I think the the point about um, the commissions being set uh, independently for each consumer chain is a good one. Yeah, I, I think, think that's a bit. I think it's there somewhere. I think it's the the first part, right? Oh, so yeah, part yeah. one right. is the chain specific commissions, security deposit, and cap community pool. Uh, yeah, it would be so. I guess the plan here uh, is to transform this eventually. So whoever put this here, to send it as a single proposal, and then if the community wants to, we need to somehow integrate this into Gaia. I would assume. Yeah, I, although the the first part is more a consumer an uh, interchain security thing, I would assume, but. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, is there is there a reason why you cannot set chain specific commissions, Marius? So I don't know because in the SDK, so the the commission is in the distribution module, right? It's a parameter of the distribution, most likely. And yeah. now it needs to be a mechanism that we add to interchain security that will overwrite that information. Or we have uh, we already sent because we after the <clears throat> after the audit from op security we mm -hmm. we fixed the the multi denomination problem right so that was the multi dent release for both consumer yeah. and provider and what we did there instead of transferring directly rewards to the fee pool address. Of the distribution module, we we transfer first to the CCV module on the provider, and from there we do a simple module-to-module uh, -module send to the FIPOL address, right? Just the ones that are uh, whitelisted. Now, in that place, we could somehow implement the logic from the distribution, right? So, but that would require a lot of work. Because basically what that means in the CCV module, so the interchain security module on the provider to add logic for distribution, to add part of the F1 mode. It's not the entire F1, but basically take out some tokens mm. from those rewards and uh, send them separately to the validators as commission. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't see how to do this without changing the SDK. Uh, it. If anybody has another idea or suggestion, so yeah, but I think we are far away from the the point of actually start implementing this because first we have to understand if there is interest in this, right? So we we need a signaling proposal for sure, and afterwards we can try to align with uh, the SDK team and see if they are, they, they are interested in uh, enabling that commission. But yeah, I, I assume that they will not do that because I don't see, they do not have any information in the SDK. There is no information about consumer chains at the moment. So yeah, this could be, could be a difficult one to figure out and it will take time to implement. Uh, the other two parts, this is a tokenomics thing. So this is doesn't have anything to do with consumer chains in part or 
not from a technical point of view. And this, I don't remember what was this about. To cap the community. Uh, that was, this was an interesting um, idea. I saw it in another proposal, uh, not Putmos's, but a different one. And basically, um, let me see if I can if I can find it. I'll put it in the chat. But like what they were proposing was like the community pool should be capped so that it can't grow past some number of millions of atoms. I actually said to the person who posted it, uh, hey, how about we cap it as a percentage of the total supply? Because if we just make it some number of millions of atoms, we'd end up having to adjust stuff. They actually agreed. Um, I'm not certain it's a great idea. My personal preference, Marius, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember like the Adam 2.0 debate, but I, I actually I looked at the idea. <laughs> right? Yes, I did indeed. <laughs> I, I, I looked, I looked at all of that and I was like, actually, why don't we print a bit more? Um I, I like the idea of having a very strong community pool. Um, and I, I can actually give a really specific reason. So we want the hub to be fully independent, fully decentralized. We don't want the ICF to ever have to pay like directly for hub development. Um, and so I'm a little like, I'm not certain about this idea of capping the community pool because if you look at, for example, osmosis, and Juno is a terrible example, but the community pool is really large uh, in terms of percentage of supply. So osmosis is probably the good example. I mean, th their community pool is a, it's really a relatively large portion of the supply. And I feel like what that does is it gives osmosis the chain independence from um, even the people building it because osmosis the chain can make its own decisions and fun things on its own. Uh, yeah, clearly having a good uh, community pool. Uh, so to have funds there that we can uh, pay for development and different teams that uh, that's fantastic. And I, I don't really understand. I didn't really look to, in details here to understand the economics of this uh, decision, because again, it's a proposal that comes in three parts. So. Uh, Usually that means, I would assume that it means that all three parts work together to reach a certain goal. Um, because people may be very, validators may be very okay with this, but may not be okay with this. So I don't know, we will have to see how exactly this goes on chain and yeah. who exactly is doing that effort. Uh, the other thing is if you have actually teams that are uh, pulling funds from the community pool, right? So the community pool is actually used not just sitting there. Why exactly do you have to cap it? Because it will just be drained by yeah, teams using it. So I think again, they wanted to cap it to limit the growth of total supply. I think the idea was that when the cap was reached, um, those coins would be burned. I, I, I don't think that it was Putmos that I was talking to about this. Um, I think it was someone else might have been in the uh I'll, I'll post a link to the telegram group because apparently i just checked the forum it's the conversation i had is not on the forum maybe it's on the telegram group um it's it's like not the worst thing ever as long as it's based on a percentage of the total supply if it's some arbitrary number i think that's actually quite a problem because, you know, Adam is designed really around providing security to the network. And um, that means that we, we know we're going to inflate over time. That's like an inevitability of the Adam design. Also, I'll, I'll throw opinion in here. I, I don't even think we should change it. I like that part of our design for the hub. I do see that from the, just scanning through the comments that uh, several people are opposed to the third part. 
not that much opposed to the first part. So um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, Probably should be split into maybe multiple proposals. Uh, yeah, we should learn from the Atom 2.0 fiasco that uh, it's better <coughs> to have focus on our signaling proposals and uh, uh, yes, either there is a good reason to sell everything like uh, like packaged together, or if not, let's split them and see the uh, the benefits of every every change individually, right? So let's see. Uh, Milan, do you want to say a few words of on uh, the the last point? Um... Unless there is unless people want to discuss further the previous points. Do we, by the way, about the duality proposal and uh, here maybe auditors or Milan probably, you know, do we have a exact, uh, like more or less a date that they, this is, this went on the hub already or it's just, uh, it's just on the forum? It's just on the forum. Uh, do do does the duality team already have in uh, mind the launch date? Uh, as far as I know, they don't. They haven't said what that is yet. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Cool. Uh, Milan, regarding the last point. Sure. Um, we've got an upcoming forum proposal coming up uh, on rate limiting. Uh, it's based on this uh, GitHub uh, issue. If you you can take a look at that. Um, James has got his hand up. James, do you want to chime in on this or other topic? Hey, I, I just have like one comment I've been working on a little bit with Jacob, which is about the ICS and tracking kind of, you know, I think, you know, I, I have some reservations around like non-inflationary tokens being like included in ICS, which is like probably not the conversation for this. But I think one of the things that makes it very difficult for Adam token holders long term to uh, make informed decisions is uh, whether or not they have the information available that's necessary. And and so one thing that I know Jacob and I have been working on over the last couple of days is just trying to understand like, you know, how to track um, for Adam, like how much ICS is like earning Cosmos. Um, there's like really no like way to do it. And I'm not sure whether it's the job of Cosmos Hub to um build something that like tracks like the inflows from providing security or whether it's the uh consumer chains or whatever you want to call them um you know to provide that information on some sort of basis and count and, and, and build something that tracks that but you know it's great to buy security from or rent security from the hub uh but we don't even know what but 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 typically when i pay like uh rent to my landlord, um, they they track, they, they know how much I'm paying them. Um, and it seems like right now it's, it's kind of hard to, to really track that in any way to kind of understand. So with the chorus one sort of post, uh, you know, it's like, there's some information there, but I still don't even know how to like calculate it. And it should, probably should be pretty, pretty like easily available. It's like my one, my one comment, especially as we start to go towards duality is about to post, duality doesn't have any inflation. Um, Neutron doesn't have any inflation. And so these transaction fees are actually quite important um, because it it is the way that um, validators and, and token holder cons consumer uh, producers are are um, securing the network. This is, a, this is their compensation for that. You could query the consumer rewards pool, um, but-, but, but like. To... But Adam token holders can't. Adam, every Adam token holder shouldn't be required or expected to do that, right? Like they shouldn't be yeah. have to do that. Like that should be someone should be like kind of abstracting that away and and making it pretty obvious and pretty clear, like to to everyone what the payments are. Yeah, I think it would be super valuable to have like a dashboard with the consumer rewards pool uh, uh, aggregate over time. Like the equivalent for osmosis proto rev, which is like really nice. Uh, and I feel like this is kind of like the same type of situation. Uh, yes, I agree with that, I think. So 
we barely launched interchain security this year, right? And we have one, now two consumer chains. I think it's time for the community. So we, we actually want to encourage the community to start building front ends, right? Dashboards to track different type of activity, right? So for example, to get information of how many rewards do I get from different consumer chains, right? So let's assume that at the moment it's easy, right? I just go claim rewards and see how much Neutron I have in my account. This will be easy. But what happens when uh, there will be transaction fees in atoms on Neutron? Then I don't have that information unless I start doing some smart things with some smart queries, right? Across the, both, both of the chains. Uh, so this type of things or uh, Monitoring, monitoring activity such as relaying of VC packets and the uh, other packets that need to be relayed for the protocol. There are a bunch of things that can be done to improve the user experience. User experience, validator experience, everybody basically interacting with this protocol. Uh, so, yeah, we would love to see more of this type of initiative. How does that get, like you said, the community, how does, would the community get, how does the community get, was it like just through AA DAO or something that, that someone would build that? Hopefully, okay. because there, so it's like, uh, it's a front end thing, right? So uh, for example, uh, wallets, and this is also on us to discuss with the wallet providers, right? To push in this direction. But uh, wallets, for example, are the perfect to give you this information about rewards, right? Because you already go there and you, move tokens from A to B and you are checking your account, it will be also nice to see when a validator operator goes to its account and says, okay, yeah, you got 10% of your commission comes from uh, this chain. That will be useful information, I would assume. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know where we are in, uh, in regards to that. If there is any, any project doing that, so I'm not aware of this at the moment. Uh, no. I don't know, Milan, if you know of something. I, I, I don't know, but it's um, it would be good to have a meeting with with the wider stakeholders in the ecosystem, and you know, like uh, get these concerns and you know, get these ideas on on table, and then then you know, push them in the, in a, in a direction that we can get some of these things implemented and funded. Uh, so then, yeah, this is um, a conversation we should have. Uh, um, with the, with the wider community as well, actively. Um, because right now, it's everything's kind of done in a kind of ad hoc way, uh, and we want to give it a bit more direction um, and see things kind of enabled and, and built out quickly. So that's, exactly. yeah, that's something we can take a look at a bit later as well. Um, with uh, the AA DAO people as well. Didn't didn't we invite those, those folks to this um, chat? Uh, I do not know, uh, okay. Isabel, if you know, but I do not know if we did invite or not. So I will have to ask Jehan or to check the membership if those people are here. Yeah, we'll double check and then um, we can invite them and add them to the group if they are not in there. Um, Aiden, the link to the hub agenda is in the Google group, but maybe Marius, if you want to drop it in the link. No, yeah. uh, 100%. One second. Yep. Cool. Um, so, uh, Milan, you are talking about the IBC rate limiting. Sure. Um, so, uh, that particular particular topic will be on forum, uh, hopefully, end of this week, um, and it's based on um, that uh, specification uh, that we've uh, drafted. So I, I just wanted to just just put that out there and uh, you know allow people to to take a look at that. But um... so a few words here, most likely. So the plan here is to get a, a signaling proposal to see if the community agrees with this concept. Uh, second, if they agree, most likely. So there is already a. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Osmosis implemented this as a smart contract in Cosmosm. Uh, then uh, the Stride team implemented it in Golang. And I think there is another team, I think Axelor, again, if I'm not mistaken, that implemented also as a SDK module, right? So 
clearly we'll have to look into this implementation to review them, all this work, integrate them. There, there will be a bunch of work. The purpose of it, in my view, is limit worst case scenarios, right? So this is actually what this will do in the end, especially in the scenario where we were saying, okay, we want to upgrade to SDK 47, right? For, uh, for Gaia. Uh, in the end, the only way to get like worst, worst thing that can happen on a chain is uh, somebody runs away with the money. And for that, you need the next hit point. Either it's an IBC bridge or it's a central exchange. I would hope that central exchanges have some rate limiting things on their ends. I would really hope that they have, but some, I don't know. We can talk with them. Some do, but not not all of them. Uh, yeah. So differently. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, IBC rate limiting, and uh, that I think this 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 thing started last year with the Binance scare, right? The Binance hack. So after that, I think Osmosis immediately put it on the, on their chain. So it will be something that since then we were discussing whether we put it or not, and I think it's time to put yeah, we put up a single a signaling proposal and we we'll see what the community if the community agrees with it. Cool. Uh, okay. Is there something else that people want to discuss? Is there something that you guys want to discuss next week or the week after? That's also a good point. <laughs> and if also, not... you know, yeah, no pressure to to say it now, um, but this doc is in the Google group. So once we get everyone kind of sorted out with the Google group situation, you can access this doc at any time and feel free to, um, you know, uh, add your items to the agenda for next time. Uh, one hundred percent. Yeah, this will be again. The purpose of this call is not necessarily so. It's twofold, right? One is for us to give you to to talk to the core contributors, right? To people that contribute to to Gaia and they are interested in uh, the development of Gaia, and uh, to give you an update. But also, it's to to have a conversation, right? To start a conversation and to be aligned on what things what we want to build together because we have the same goals. Um, I do not have. I don't know if it's worth for the last minutes to discuss about fraud votes. I do not have the proposal link. Yulan, do you have by any chance the proposal? It's not the proposal, the hub forum link. Um, I, I can dig it up. Just give me a mo. Uh, which one was it? Go look for it. Yep, this is the one. It's in, uh, it's in the chat. There you go. Thank you. So let's take it from here. Put it here. Yeah. So what will be great? So I've seen that there is already some discussion here, and this is great. So this is what we want to do is to basically start a conversation about this issue. And uh, the the it's not that much to talk about it besides yeah, Jehan already sum it up here quite nicely. Uh, this will enable short term for us to to have a interchange uh, opt-in and eventually mass security on the hub. And the main advantage of opt-in is clearly it's uh, dealing with the concern of validators. So in uh, in my view, and I think a lot of people share this view, opt-in it would be a huge, huge jump from replicate security. So replicate security as it stands, it still has a huge advantage, right? You replicate the security of the hub. So it's very strong alignment with uh, what uh, with the hub, right? You get more or less the same security, keeping that 5% at the bottom. With opt-in, it will enable many more chains to join because it will be easier, right? Uh, I've seen that there were discussions on Twitter and other parts like, and this is a concern, a real concern. After a handful of consumer chains that will join at the beginning, so they will have this benefit of being the first ones, 
how many how many consumer chains will the validator be okay validator community be okay with right is that number 10 20 100 i would assume that there will be quite concern at 100 but it's just a personal opinion i don't know we clearly need more metrics in this regard but opt-in will enable exactly that right every consumer chain every chain could go get a subset and run uh, run their uh, their nodes uh, run their block uh, the problem that uh, is that, that we try to solve here is that that subset is not trusted anymore and actually the entire concept of ibc relies on trusting each chain right and if the chain is not trusted how how exactly can you Lash, or can you punish the validators that are misbehaving on the chain? Right, so it's double signing is quite easy. We are already working on this cryptographic equivocation, but the more important is invalid execution, which we take it for granted because we do have this assumption of a majority is correct, which will not really be the case for a chain that has just, let's say, three validators from the hub. Right, three validators. If you take the first three validators from the validator set on the hub, probably they will have like 15% or more. That's still a very large market cap. But compared to the entire market cap of the hub, I don't know how, how secure the chain will be viewed and how decentralized. But having some type of uh, fraud, uh, fraud proofs will be the solution to that. Um, that will take a while until uh, we get there. So the earlier solution is to just have fraud votes, which is in a nutshell. So again, it's I simplify here a lot, but it's pretty much a form of social consensus, right? So people go vote and they say, okay, that guy, that validator misbehaved. Um, yeah, clearly, I'm not doing justice to the proposal because it's uh, it's much more uh, much more stuff here. But I just want to raise awareness of it. Please have a look over it. It's quite nicely written, and uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, start the conversation on it. Any comments, questions regarding it? I think it's a really interesting proposal. My one question was like, how, how do you ensure that there are enough full nodes running to check execution? That's a good point, right? Because- is, are there, is there like an incentive mechanism for full nodes or like, how does that, I don't know, have you all thought about that? So it was a discussion. I it's it's a very good point that you are making, right? And it's, uh, it's something that we have to clearly design and figure it out, right? The idea is that indeed to to verify to validate such a fraud proposal, right? So the idea is that you have somebody sending a proposal and saying, look, it's valid with the proof uh, in it that some validator misbehaves, like. Uh, for, uh, created and if I voted in for an invalid block. Uh, and to verify that, you need to run a full node of that consumer chain. Because this is how verification needs. You need access to the data. So to get access to the data, you run a full, since we don't have data availability layer yet. So you have to run the full node and to understand the state machine. So now that's expensive to because it's not just running it, but you have to sync the state of that node and then run the transaction or run the block and see that, okay, it's an invalid block. Okay, the proof is valid. Okay. Uh, this in practice, this is in practice, this may work that there will be a lot of validators that will just do this. Right? There will be, but of course, this is could be a centralizing factor. So it's, I really don't know was the right answer. It may be a way to incentivize the, the validators that are doing this, but we also have to pay attention to not go in the, the opposite problem, to not uh, deal with the opposite problem that somebody can game the system, right? Yeah. Somebody is just sending proposal to itself and they validate it to just make money. And they are completely bogus proposals. Yeah, um, for sure. So clearly it's not, it's still 
we can still discuss. So it's just an idea. I think a lot of these things, uh, Johan, a lot of this question Johan is addressing, but uh, it's clearly not the final design that we start uh, and we implement it tomorrow. I also think if it goes into governance, if it's like finally the arbitration is done by governance, you need, you know, basically the community, you need to have infrastructure for the community to evaluate their proposal, which means that you need to have social infrastructure for people to actually, you know, look at a bunch of results from full nodes, know if, you know, the equivocation is real or not or, or whatever, right? Like you can't have the community voting on a proposal and not know if it's if it's real or not you know that's true i was also thinking that it would be nice to have some type of tooling that we provide to the community okay run this script for example so at it's bare minimum run the script and it will do everything for you to validate this yeah it will cost you money to run that script because you need to run a node and all these things but at least you do not need to know all the you don't need to have all the knowledge of how to run that node. At the same time, we are talking about validator operators, so they do have that knowledge already. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I do not. I I do not expect that a lot of uh, delegators will do this, mm -hmm. because I I don't see myself doing that. But I'm sure that there will be somebody doing it. Would it not be part of a proposal? Or something, you know, you just have uh, this functionality attached to a proposal. Could be, could be. So it's still this is this is still room to improve and to the to have a discussion there and to figure out solutions. But clearly, it's not everything solved. No, but it's uh, we should think of the holistic picture, not just one part of this bigger puzzle. Otherwise, it just doesn't work properly. Yeah. 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 So uh, we do we do not want to put this in this state. I do not think this is the idea to put it in a signaling proposal. I think the idea here was to post the idea, uh, to post the proposal. Right? Look, this is a new mechanism we can build, uh, and to start a conversation, to have uh, some open questions, and to try to figure out how we can de deal with some things. The advantage is that we can be the first to actually enable this it will take a while for ethereum to do this they do not have governance so they cannot really do this so that means that they actually need to wait for fraud proofs so that will be our uh, like the way to get ahead but yeah i have a comment oh sorry no no go ahead well, my, my comment is this, that like, if we look at hard slashes, that's, you know, slashes for equivocation uh, across Cosmos for all of time, I don't think we've ever seen a single one that results from fraud. I think they have all been misconfiguration over time. And, and yeah, like, it, it's a heinous, uh, very bad misconfiguration that nobody should be doing, but should your delegators lose 5% over that? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not really feeling that actually. So this is one of a, a number of reasons why I'm really strongly in support of what Yihan is describing here, which just basically seems like we can put governance in charge of the slashes. I think the hardest part is going to be to restrict the scope of this mechanism. It's so like just broad. Um, I'll throw in one more tiny comment because I know we're like a little, little bit over time. Um, I had to manually slash a validator once. I I'll explain what I mean. I don't know if you guys remember Firestake. They stole from Osmosis. Um, well, here's how a manual slash works. You go out on Twitter, you tell everybody that that somebody who just committed, you know, a federal crime basically, uh, you know, did that. And you tell that person over and over, hey, you need to remove 100% of your self-bonded stake. No, 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 not just on osmosis, on every chain. 
because we can't have thieves validating. Um, luckily, they they eventually like agreed to this, um, but I really like the use of the word broad here um, because that situation actually would have been covered, and um, it, it wasn't fun what I had to do there. Yeah, I, so basically this will be social consensus governance. The community agrees, uh, and I agree it's very uh, it's very rare. Uh, clearly, for double signing, this will not even cover double signing. This will just cover invalid execution, which actually doesn't happen because to have it's exactly what Jehan is saying in the proposal. Uh, token toxicity, right? So the problem is that because of this part, nobody is crazy enough. To, to basically like to form a cartel of two thirds or one third at least and uh, destroy the reputation of the hub. You will not manage to do this. It's too much of a stake. Uh, but uh, if the stake is much, much smaller and then you don't affect your token, but you are affecting the token of the consumer chain, that's uh, becoming scary, right? Because then maybe you do that. So this, uh, uh, the, the rationale that it never happened it's it's good. It's good to think of this, but at the same time, that's not enough to to guarantee that it will never happen once we change the conditions. And opt in will change the conditions. It will change the game. Um, but yeah, um, we are over time, so I would like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, and uh, if you have. Uh, Follow up questions. If you have uh, things that you want to discuss, please add them to the agenda. And I'm looking forward for the next meeting. Thanks, everyone. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks See you guys. So it's really good. Thank Thanks, you everybody. For hosting. Thank Bye. you. Apologies for the uh, the slight oopsie in the beginning with the Zoom link, but hopefully next time it'll all be ironed out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Take care. Bye.